I'm going to marry the woman I cheated on you with and I want a divorce. My husband told me this without hesitation, and he even said this to me. I'm going to ask you to take care of my parents while I start my new married life. What? Please, take care of us, Carol. My in-laws who don't blame their own son for having an affair wants to rely on me. I can't be with these insane people. So then I told them something. Then my in-laws turned pale and got down on their knees to me with all their might. I am so sorry. My name is Carol. I'm a 40-year-old part-time housewife. My husband and I have been married for about 16 years. We met through work. We are colleagues in the same company. We worked together on the same projects, went out for drinks, got to know each other better, and ended up dating. My husband was two years older than me, and at the time, he seemed to be very mature. But he was funny and cool, and I fell in love with him instantly. We went out on several dates and ended up going out. After about a year of dating, he proposed to me, and we decided to get married. I was so happy that I was going to marry the man I loved. I was only 24 years old at the time, but I think I really loved him because I still decided to marry him. After that, my husband and I worked together and had a happy married life. Three years into our marriage, our son Thomas was born. He was so cute. I thought he was an angel when he was just born. We were happy, and we were building a good family. After the birth of my son, I decided to quit my job and focus on raising my son. I think it was a good thing that I quit my job because I was able to spend a lot of time with my son. And I had a good relationship with my in-laws. When I went to visit my in-laws, they would smile kindly at me and talk to me, and I felt comfortable with them. I thought we had a really happy marriage. They loved their grandson, Thomas, very much, and often came to our house or we invited them to our parents-in-law's house. Then, my husband made this suggestion. Why don't we just move in with my parents? Then they could see Thomas every day and we could live in a big house without paying rent. My husband's suggestion sounded good to me. That's because my in-laws and I had a good relationship at that time. My son is going to get bigger and it would be better for him to live in a bigger house where he can have more space. So, I agreed to live with them. I would come to regret that my decision was a mistake. At first, I thought cohabitation was going very well. My parents-in-law seemed very happy to be able to live with their grandson, and my husband seemed relaxed to be back at home. I did my best to be a housewife and did my best to take care of the housework, and my parents-in-law and my husband never complained about it. My son grew up to be a good boy, and we all watched him grow up. However, there was one thing that bothered me. My parents-in-law spoiled my son too much. They bought him everything he wanted and gave him allowance without permission. I thought it was not good for his education, so one day I said to my parents-in-law, Could you please stop buying Thomas so many things? When I said this, my in-law's eyes widened and they became angry. Are you trying to deprive us of the joy of spending time with our grandchild? Do you think you are the only one raising him? My in-laws yelled at me like that, but as a mother myself, I wanted to educate my son properly. That's why I didn't back down. That's not what I'm saying. Of course, feel free to play with Thomas, but please, don't buy him things. If Thomas wanted something, you'd buy it for him, wouldn't you? Yeah, how will you take the responsibility if we don't buy it and make him sad and he doesn't like us? It seems my parents-in-law are buying things for him to make him like them. But how will they take responsibility if my son becomes selfish because of it? I will explain to Thomas that his grandparents are very kind and loving to him, so please don't buy him anything like that. 
My in-laws didn't seem to be convinced by what I was saying. And when my husband came home from work, they started talking to him as if it was my fault. Carol doesn't want me to play with our grandson. She wants him all to herself. How dare she do this to us? I was surprised to hear my in-laws say something completely different. And my husband took them at their word. What's the meaning of this? Are you being mean to my mom and dad? Wait a minute, I didn't do anything like that. I gave my husband a good explanation. I told him I wanted them to stop buying too much stuff for the sake of our son's education. But he believed what his parents said, not what I said. Cut the crap. Don't lie to me like that. I'm not lying. So, you're saying my parents are lying? My husband's eyes widened and he got even angrier. In the end, no matter how much I tried to explain, he believed his parents. I didn't think you were such a horrible woman. From then on, my husband and in-laws became cold towards me. You cook terrible food. You serve pasta too often. Don't treat us like we're old people, you idiot. Don't cause trouble for my parents. You really are a useless wife. My in-laws and husband treat me like this on a daily basis. How can they keep abusing me like that? I think it's mentally exhausting to keep picking on people. I even considered divorce. But my son was only about five years old at the time, and I had been a housewife since he was born and hadn't worked for a long time, so I wasn't sure if I could find a new job. And I wasn't sure if I could take him with me when I left. Under the current circumstances, my in-laws can take care of him, and my husband has a steady paycheck, so they might decide that it would be better for him to take our son instead of me. I didn't want to give up my son just because things weren't going well with my in-laws. So, instead of getting a divorce, I just had to live with it. When I didn't resist, my in-laws and husband began to say worse and worse things to me. They were so abusive to me that I began to wonder if they were really the same people I used to know. I lived a hard life, day by day. No matter how badly my husband and in-laws treated me, I thought it would be better if I could be there to watch my son grow up. My son grew up so fast and entered elementary school. I was worried that he might become selfish because my in-laws had given him too many things, but he is a good listener at home, and it seems to be the same at school. I was extremely happy when his homeroom teacher told me during a parent-teacher conference that he was a very kind and considerate child. And my son was studying hard and doing well in school, but for some reason my in-laws made it sound like it was their achievement. I knew it was because of what we taught him. Yes, praise and extend. Buy them what they want. That's what's important. It doesn't make sense that buying children what they want will improve their grades. But my in-laws seem to want to involve themselves in everything. I just idly listened to them as they gave themselves credit for my son's own hard work. I never tried to hook him with things like my in-laws did, but he still adored me. He would always talk to me and tell me about things that happened at school. I guess my in-laws didn't like that. When my son reached the middle years of elementary school, the amount of things they bought for him jumped up. Up until then, it had been sweets and toys. But at that time, they were buying him the latest video game consoles and software. No matter how much I tried to stop them, they wouldn't listen. So I had to teach my son not to play too much and to be punctual and keep his promises. But even then, my in-laws got involved in a messy way. Don't you feel sorry for him to make him stop when he still wants to play? We wanted Thomas to enjoy it. That's why we bought it for him. I was completely disgusted. 
All I wanted was for my son to grow up to be a good man. That's what I spent my days thinking. Time passed by and my son turned 13 years old. Now that he is in junior high school, he will enter puberty. And as a parent, you may have to deal with a lot of difficulties. Just when I was thinking about that, an unexpected problem happened. It was on a holiday. My husband suddenly called me into his bedroom and said he wanted to talk to me. Why on earth did he bring me in here? I knew that he had no intention to do anything romantic because he and I had completely cooled off and I myself didn't want to do anything like that with him anymore. As I was thinking about this, he suddenly made a surprising statement. I'm going to marry the woman I'm having an affair with, so please, divorce me. What? Divorce? I was startled by these unexpected words from my husband. Well, it's no wonder you're surprised. I've been trying to keep you in the dark, but I figured it was time to tell you. My husband told me so openly. Why would he want to tell the world that he was having an affair? Well, I don't know what a stupid person thinks. And finally, he even said something like this. I'm going to ask you to take care of my parents when I start my new married life. Huh? Wait a minute. We're getting a divorce, right? Then I'll have to leave with Thomas, won't I? When I said that, my husband said something outrageous. I'm the one who's leaving. What? What do you mean? I'm going to leave and start a new life with my new wife. And I'm worried about my parents. So, I'm leaving you in charge of the house. You'll have a house to live in with Thomas, so it's a win-win, right? I couldn't close my gaping mouth. It's not win-win at all. I was speechless at how crazy he sounded. I'm going to talk to my mom and dad right now. My husband said that and suddenly started to leave the room. I rushed after him. He gave the same explanation to my in-laws as he did to me. I thought they would be angry with him for this, but they were also crazy people. I see. I'm going to miss you, but I guess that can't be helped. I agree. It's better for the newlyweds to spend their honeymoon alone. I'm sure Carol will take care of the final details. Please, take care of us. My in-laws tried to depend on me instead of blaming their own son for the affair. If you try to leave, I'll make sure you leave Thomas behind. You'll be the only one who's leaving. I can't be with these insane people. So, I told them something. I'm telling you, since it's my husband's fault, I'm entitled to alimony. And there's a good chance I'll get custody of my son too. What do you mean? My husband committed adultery. Normally, the custody goes to the non-adulterer. In addition, the mother usually gets custody. Wait a minute. Then you'll take Thomas and leave? Yes, of course I would. I won't let you do that. I know. Let's ask Thomas what he thinks. That's what my in-laws and husband said and went to get our son. I wonder if they are going to tell him everything. My son enters the room and says, What's wrong? Mom and Dad are getting a divorce. What? So, Thomas, how would you like to stay here and live with your grandparents? That's not a fair way to explain or ask a question. I was quick to make the point. You better explain to him that we're divorcing because you cheated on me. When I said this, my husband and in-laws were in a panic. Thomas is just a junior high school student, you idiot. Yes, that's right. You're going to make him go into shock. My in-laws and husband were blaming me, but before I could say anything back, my son opened his mouth. Dad, you're the one who caused the shock. Why are you all blaming mom? I mean, I could hear you guys arguing earlier. So... You were asking who I would go with if you get a divorce, right? I'd go with Mom, of course. Thomas, why? Don't you want to live with Grandma and Grandpa? 
You guys are nice to me, but you're horrible to my mom. To be honest, I can't forgive you for that. I despise you guys for not blaming dad and not protecting mom. Despise? My in-laws looked shocked. Anyway, I have one answer for you. I'm leaving here with my mom. I'm going to protect her from now on. Thomas. I was so happy that my son was on my side. Then, my in-laws turned pale and got down on their knees as hard as they could towards me. I am so sorry. I apologize. So please, don't leave this house. I don't want to leave my grandson. My in-laws pleaded with me like that. My husband also begged. Please, if you guys don't stay here, my plan. My son and I were not going to give in at any cost. Thomas and I will no longer have anything to do with you. We will leave this house, and we will leave this family for good. I said this and started to pack my bags. My son joined me in packing his bag with only what he needed for the time being. Where are you going? My parents' house. If you go to your parents' house, Thomas will have to change schools. Wouldn't you feel sorry for him? My husband said something like that and tried to keep us here until the end. But then my son said to him, I'd rather change schools than stay in this house forever. Dad, you should first be sorry for what you've done to this family, having an affair. Do you have any idea the damage you've done? My son was trying hard not to laugh at the ridiculousness of it all. My husband was speechless and pale. My in-laws were so exhausted that they just slumped down on the floor. My son and I left the house and drove to my parents' house. After that, I hired a lawyer and demanded divorce, alimony, and child support from my husband. Of course, I also demanded alimony from the adulterer. He thought that if I moved in with his parents, he wouldn't have to pay child support. But everything didn't go according to plan, and as a result, he had to pay alimony and child support. In addition, the adulterous partner eventually dumped my husband. My husband is now currently staying with his parents and putting most of his income towards alimony and child support. By the way, I told my parents-in-law's neighbors about the affair, and I also sent a content-certified letter to my ex-husband's workplace so people around my ex-husband know about the affair, and my ex-husband and his parents are isolated from everyone. My ex-husband's parents told him, Because of you, I can't see Thomas anymore. And in reply, my husband said, You guys have been living a good life with my money. And they would argue back and forth. My ex-husband sent me a message saying that he wanted to get back together with me. But I blocked him after reading his messages. I also blocked all incoming calls so that he could not contact me. Then I moved back to home with my son and started working as an office worker for a company that my father knew. Now, I am raising my son as a single mother with the support of my parents. My son is still the same kind-hearted boy that he was after all that happened, and he seems to be adjusting well to his new school. I will continue to work as hard as I can and watch over my son's growth.